Hello, welcome back, I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be discussing Thomas Frank's Brentford in Tactics Explained. Remember to subscribe if you're new, smash the like button, but anyway, let's get this party started. Following their promotion to the Premier League, Brentford have taken the competition by storm with their attacking intent and innovative tactics. So today, I'm going to go through what makes the Bees such a special side. In the Premier League, Thomas Frank has set Brentford up in a 3-5-2. They're defensively very solid, which has drawn comparisons to the likes of Chris Wilder's Sheffield United. But they've started their top flight career in an even better shape than the Blades did in the 2019-20 season. Comparing the clubs in their respective seasons, Brentford not only have a greater XG per 90, but a lower XG per 90 too, with Brentford enjoying an XG difference of nearly 0.8 per 90 minutes. Brentford's great defensive record comes from Frank's system and the players' defensive work rate. Without the ball, they defend in a 3-5-2 and look to press in a man-to-man -man scheme. This can often see the ball side wing back step up and press resembling a 4-4-2. Whilst they've got possession, their wing backs look to hold the width as the central midfielders supplement the attack, resembling a lopsided 3-2-1-4. They're a very direct team that often look to get their strikers involved, often playing for flick-ons or knockdowns before building the attack with short but quick passing combinations, notably progressing through the up-back-through method. In the final third, we've seen a lot of Ivan Toni dropping off and playing balls through the defence, which can also see the Bees sending crosses from wing-backs or even a supporting central midfielder or striker pulling wide and crossing for his partner. When the wing-backs do cross, however, we often see the other join the front two in the box and the sporting midfielder get on the edge. They're a very well-drilled side and these tactics alone will ask questions of the very best teams in the Premier League. But what sets them apart is their attacking threat from set pieces. Like FC Michelin, Brentford is owned by Matthew Benham. Under Benham's guidance, Michelin have been built on data and analytics as they look to gain marginal advantages by looking at the game differently. They won their first league title in their history under his ownership in 2015, with set pieces being a major focus of their success. In fact, in 1920, when they last won the league, a whopping 49% of their goals were scored from set pieces. Giving Michelin's success, Brentford's own model also has a big focus on data and set pieces, which sees them come up with very creative routines. Take their opening goal in the 3-3 draw with Liverpool. Janot with the free kick, he takes it short to Norgard, who lifts it over the top for Canos to cross. Tony gets a touch as Pinnock finishes at the back post. This was a very well thought out move. Brentford loaded the back post in a way that made Liverpool assume that that's where the ball was going. Then the initial square pass takes the attention of Salah and Jones, which allows Canos to make his run untracked. Combine this with the initial positioning of Tony and Janssen in offside positions means that Liverpool's defenders leave them as they're not a danger. However, by using the width of the pitch through Canos and getting in behind, Liverpool's defenders were too far away from Brentford's now onside attackers to catch them. Even though Canos' touch is bad, Tony has to improvise and Janssen misses a chance. Brentford's data-driven approach loading of the back post sees Pinnock score. But Brentford aren't all about unusual routines. Their general setup is excellent from all dead balls. And like with an attacking structure, Brentford have a set-piece playbook. No matter the situation, be it a corner, free kick or throw-in, Brentford load the box with their five biggest aerial threats. The three centre-backs, defensive midfielder Christian Norgard and key striker Ivan Toni. But to protect against the transition, they always have one short passing option and three players on the edge of the box who wait for the second balls and as competent at finishing off clearances as they are stopping counter-attacks. They don't just have one type of delivery, but Brentford can send in all kinds of passes and crosses to targeted areas of the box. However, from free kicks, Brentford have a preference to overload the back post with their three centre-backs up against two markers. However, they can use variety and diversion by moving one of them away. Regardless, it's always Pontus Janssen and Ethan Pinnock you will find that space. Pinnock especially seems to be the man they look for on the back post to knock balls back across for teammates. Their free kick setup worked to perfection in the 2-1 win over West Ham. Mateus Jensen with the free kick as Brentford have a two-on-one at the back post with Pinnock and Jansen and their three safety players on the edge. Jensen looks at the back post and finds Jansen. His shot is saved, but first to react is Wissa on the edge who rifles the ball home. Whilst this looks like a fortunate goal, Brentford have done their homework. 
positioning their most dangerous aerial threats where they can be the most effective. But Frank has positioned a forward on the edge of the box who's going to gamble on a loose ball more than any other player. Wissa is the only player on the move and he has got the finishing ability to win the game for the Bees. They do this frequently with either Wissa or of course Mbermo sitting in that position for those second balls on the back post. Brentford also have throw-ins to create chances from. Like with corners and free kicks, Brentford load the box with five players. But often, a centre-back takes the throw, the other striker joins the five. The three tallest players, often the two centre-backs and Tony, attack the near post and take the attention of the goalkeeper, whilst Norgard and often and Bermo position themselves deep, reacting for and attacking the ball in motion. They are usually pretty stationary until the contact, but they're on their toes, which usually sees them winning the second ball. We saw this in their second goal against Arsenal, where Leno couldn't get to the ball to stop the cross, but couldn't also stop Norgard from heading home the second ball. Like with other scenarios, Brentford have variations of throw-ins, such as taking short throws to crossing first time to their tall attackers. They even throw in a bit of disguise by having long throwers moving towards the ball, as if they're gonna go and take the throw before getting the ball into play. This exact moment nearly caught Liverpool out. Although by loading the box and leaving their centre-backs high, Brentford still managed to score from a chaotic second phase. Canos with the throw-in, as the centre-back, Zanka, trots over, which sees Liverpool switch off. Canos takes it quickly and crosses, but Van Dijk is the only Liverpool player switched on and clears, but Brentford recover the possession. They go back to David Rea, who calmly picks out Canos with one of the passes of the season from a goalkeeper. Canos finds Ayer, who hangs it up, to the back post where Brentford have a three-on-one on Trent Alexander-Arnold. Norgard wins the header, Janssen hits the bar as Janel puts the ball into the back of the net. This goal shows the benefit of sustaining an attack and leaving your aerial threats high after a set piece, but it also shows how important a goalkeeper can be. A big aspect of Brentford's play is creating second ball scenarios. Often when their centre-backs have a free defensive header, they'll direct the ball upwards to give their teammates the opportunity to optimise their positioning and win the second ball. They do this through horizontal compactness and a lot of bodies to contest the ball, so wherever it lands, there's a Brentford player who can challenge. But the goalkeeper is also an integral part to this strategy. David Rea is able to put the ball anywhere on the pitch from goal kicks, open play and with the ball in his hands. And Alvaro Fernandez is also very very good with its feet. Brentford set up attacking situations through Ray's distribution, but load the target area of the pitch ready for second balls. The preferred method is through targeting Ivan Toni, who attracts the centre back, but through his size and strength, he can pin and either knock the ball down or flick the ball on. To make the latter more viable, we constantly see Brian and Bermo spinning in behind ready for that flick on. But they don't always go to Tony. Thomas Frank is a very pragmatic manager and will look to make the most of a slight advantage for his team. If their opposition has a physically inferior fullback, the goalkeeper will target them and look to use Brentford's wing backs as a target to flick the ball onto Bermo. We saw this to great effect in the 3-3 draw with Liverpool, where Brentford targeted Trent Alexander-Arnold using left wing back Rico Henry as their target man. In fact, Eve and Tony should have put the bees ahead on eight minutes. Brentford with a free kick, Rea goes long to Henry, who easily outdrums Trent, flicking it onto Mbermo. The forward drags Matip out wide before playing a 1-2 with Henry before swinging in a cross that Tony can't quite get an angle of the goal. This was a big chance for Brentford. Given the quality of Tony, you can see how easily Liverpool are undone by Brentford's direct tactics. In the initial aerial duel, Trent has to challenge, which leaves a massive gap for Matip to cover. But as Mbermo is expecting the flick on, he gets there first. Then Brentford's attackers quickly create a crossing situation whilst Matip is out of position and Tony completely blindsides Virgil van Dijk. But we can't understate the importance of Tony in this style. The forward is an incredible threat in the air and will dominate most players in those kinds of duels. Immediately after he should have put Brentford ahead, the Bees kept the pressure on with their second ball tactics and Tony's aerial dominance. Allison goes long with a goal kick, but Janssen heads the ball up as Brentford swarm that central area. Tony out jumps Van Dijk and Mbermo rides one challenge, bypasses Robertson and works it to Onyeka who can't convert. This wasn't the only occasion that Tony dominated Liverpool's defenders. In fact, Tony won nine aerial duels in the game 
with Van Dijk winning 50% of his duels, whilst Matip just won 38%. Both were well below their usual aerial duel win rates, thanks to Tony's ability and Brentford's tactics. Even Tony and Brian and Burmo are another reason why Brentford's tactics are so effective. They're a classic big man, little man strike force, but with a modern twist. And Burmo is a dynamic forward with great movement, who's capable of playing all across the line. Tony, meanwhile, is a modern day target man with the physicality of the classic role, but the technical ability of a playmaker. The duo often combine by getting Tony on the ball deep, either going through direct long balls or by playing it into his feet, whilst Burmo is always making that run on the last line. Burmo's versatility means that he can make the run in every direction beyond Tony and still be effective. When he's wide left, he operates like a classic winger, looking to set crosses into the box. From the right-hand side, he's more like an inside forward, cutting in onto a stronger left foot and getting shots off. Whilst through the middle, he plays like an advanced forward who looks to break away and finish off chances. Tony is irreplaceable in this setup. His combination of physicality and creativity have been outstanding. In fact, he ranks number one in the Premier League for expected assists this season. The two strikers also make Brentford tough to play through and offer a genuine first line of defence with the Bees often dropping to a 5-3-2-0 to block off central passing lanes and allow the forwards to set the pressing tempo. All in all, Thomas Frank has made the Bees into an outfit that can mix it up with the best. His alternative tactics with a heavy focus on set pieces combined with the determination to play positive football will see Brentford become an established Premier League club in the long term. But anyway guys, what do you think? Have you been impressed by Brentford so far this season? Let me know in the comments below. I've been Statman Dave. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?